Thanks for listening to the Mornings with Carmen LaBerge podcast, made available thanks to support from listeners just like you. Your daily encouragement that God has the world in the hollow of his hand. This is Mornings with Carmen LaBerge on Faith Radio. If we're gonna fly, we fly like eagles, arms out wide. If we're gonna fear, we fear no evil. We will rise by your power. We will go by your spirit. We are bold. If we're gonna stand, we stand as giants. If we're gonna walk, we walk as lions. Good morning. Today is. Yeah, there's a little bit of a fill in the blank there. I'm Carmen LeBurge. You're listening to Mornings with Carmen here on the Faith Radio Network. Today is, well, today is Thursday, April the 11th, 2024. Today is maybe your birthday, maybe your rebirth day. Maybe today is the day you celebrate that um, you came to a saving knowledge of who Jesus Christ is. Maybe today's your rebirth day. Maybe today's the day of salvation. Um, today is. Oh, we could go to like that national calendar thing and type that in. Today is national what day? Oh, submarine day. Look at that. All right. If you've never been to a submarine race, that's kind of fun. Um, National pet day, anniversary of the Battle of Rivas day, barbershop quartet day, dog therapy appreciation day, um, the global day to end child sexual abuse. It is uh, Grand National Day, International Louie Louie Day. Louie Louie. It's National Oh Hey Hey. Here's one I can get on board with. Today is National Cheese Fondue Day. Also, Clean Up Your Pantry Day. I don't know if you're supposed to dip all those things that you find in your pantry in your cheese fondue, but there you go. If you um, still have an 8-track tape player, today is National 8-track Tape Day feel like that's probably um, something that's going to need to be explained to a lot of people. It's also National James Day. If your name happens to be James, like my husband, who goes by Jim, uh, today's your day, man. Today's your day. Oh, oh, oh. Hey, hey. Today's also National Poutine Day. Mm -hmm. Again, something that's going to require translation across some cultures today. On and on and on. All right. Today, uh, It could be your birthday. It could be your rebirth day. It could be all kinds of things. Today is also the day that if you um, have neighbors who um, are Muslim and are practitioners of the Islamic faith, they are celebrating because Ramadan has ended. Today is the day. The month-long fast during daylight hours has come to an end, and they are gathering with loved ones and feasting. So that's the context of what took place yesterday. Um, in terms of the development of the war of uh, Israel, the, the, the war that Israel is waging against the terrorist organization called Hamas in Gaza. So three of the sons of Hamas's political leader, his name is Ismael Haniha. Um, he's the political leader of Hamas. He basically lives in luxury in Qatar. He doesn't live in Gaza. Um, he is not interested in the end of uh, of the war. He is interested in the end of Israel. He's not interested in Hamas giving up or giving in, um, and he is willing to suffer whatever uh, familial consequences are necessary, although he personally is um, living in a very secure situation in Qatar. He is not in Gaza. He's the political leader of Hamas. Um, he has 13 adult children. Many of his children and grandchildren do live in Gaza, and yesterday, three of his sons and four of his grandchildren were traveling in a car on their way to a family gathering, again, to celebrate the end, in the end of Ramadan, um, and their vehicle was targeted by an IDF drone, and they were all killed. And the loss of life is tragic, no matter whose life it is or what circumstances under which somebody loses a child or a grandchild. But this father's reaction? He thanked Allah for the honor of bestowing their martyrdom upon his family. He also said that this would in no way change the demands nor the tactics of Hamas. Quote, the blood of my sons is not dearer than the blood of our people. Um, Why bring this up? Because today's that day. 
saber rattling um, is real. War is real. Um, and I think we have to live with the very real expectation of what we say we believe. History is not cyclical. If you have not um, read the entirety of the book, I recommend you do so. There is a redemptive arc, and we are somewhere along its path. I mean, since the, since the days of John the Baptist, you know, this, this clarion call has been going out, you know, repent. Um, the kingdom of God is near. The kingdom of heaven is near. Jesus instituted it when he was here, but it's not fully realized yet. And if you have ever recited the Apostles' Creed, then you know um, what we say we believe as Christians, that Jesus is coming again to judge the living and the dead. There will be a second advent. And I'm not here to predict to you when that will be, but every day we're one day closer to it. And that is certain. And you say, why does Carmen sound so exercised today about the potentialities of what is happening um, in the world at war? Well, the United States intelligence assessment is that a major attack by Iran on Israel is, here's the word, imminent. It's apparently not a, a matter of if Iran will attack Israel, either directly or through one of its proxies. But when? That is, um, that is the assessment of U.S. and Israeli intelligence um, today. And the United States now believes a major attack on Iran, uh, by Iran, excuse me, on Israel is, quote, imminent. Um, this is the most contested patch of ground in the entire earth. When we're talking about Israel, when we're talking about this little stretch of land across the Mediterranean, um, we're, we're talking about the most contested patch of earth where more blood has been spilt generation after generation after generation um, than any other patch of ground on the entire globe. And so, yes, October the 7th, 2023 is going to be a day that lives in infamy. But if you're if you're a Jew, so too, you know, is June 5 to 10 of 1967 or May 14th of 1948 or roll back the scroll all the day, all the way back to, you know, God gives us this land um, that he has promised to us. And it is called Cana. So uh, why say all this today? Um, because the spilling of blood matters. Every life is precious. And we do grieve with those who grieve. And so we want to sympathize today with those who um, are in the midst of the realities and the hell of war. Um, because it's real. And we also want to recognize that the most essential and important blood ever spilt was spilt on the same land, in the same place, on a hill called Calvary under the occupation of the Romans. And his name was Jesus. And his blood matters. So today, spend some time considering where you are in relationship to God, your posture before him, and the reality that Jesus is coming again to judge the living and the dead. There are uh, lots of things making headline news uh, here in the United States and around the world. Um, the Pope uh, has been making headlines this week because of uh, issuing a document on the infinite dignity of human beings. Um, and it, it, it led me to want to talk again with April Redliner um, from Canavox because we need help being equipped on, on the conversations that um, that are happening in our families, in our communities, in our churches. Um, and one of the things that is surfaced in this Declaration of, of Infinite Dignity by the Pope is this conversation and question of surrogacy. And I I wanted to um I wanted to be sure that we had the conversation in a way that really equips us as Christians um, and allows us the time and the opportunity 
to acknowledge that it's possible we have thought like people of the world and not thought biblically about some of these things. So April Redliner is going to join us next. She is the executive director of Cana Vox, and we're going we're gonna to talk about sex and gender and identity. Yeah, and things like surrogacy. That's up next here on Mornings with Carmen. When you think about um, marriage, when you think about sexuality, when you think about the conversations taking place in the culture today, do you have the mind of Christ on these matters? Have you cultivated a biblical understanding? Or, or you know, if you're really honest, have you pretty much just adopted the ways of the world? Um, so it, helping us think about who we are as human beings made in the image of God and helping us understand what marriage is from God's perspective, what sex is from God's perspective— um, that is, that's what the ministry of Canavox is really all about. And April Redliner is the executive director and she's joining us today. Good morning, April. Good morning, Carmen. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So, um, there are conversations happening in the culture today that made me say, oh, I hope we get to talk to April soon. And then here you are. So, um, it thrills my heart. I thought that, um, in, in relationship to what the, what the Vatican has released, this Declaration of Infinite Dignity um, uh, about human beings, one of the things that surfaces in there is their condemnation of surrogacy. And I thought, hey, hey, there is um, a part of a Canavox video on sex, gender, and identity um, that, uh, that actually deals with that. So could we talk a little bit about that topic? Yeah, yeah. The, uh, the document that the Vatican released, really, I feel like it, it's just, um, it's like the list of the Canavox topics almost, right? Right. There's so many of them. Um, and surrogacy is one of these things that, um, you know, it's, I think people don't, people don't necessarily think about all of the implications when they're thinking of it, right? They think, oh, there maybe there's a husband and wife who are infertile and they can't have children. What's the problem of using a surrogate? And, you know, what we try to do in our, our session on surrogacy is really hone in on that and have people think about all of the implications of having, um, you know, we ha- really have them study and discuss all of the, the angles of it, considering the medical, the moral, the legal aspects of surrogacy, right? As really, as well as the points of um, the surrogate and the child born of surrogacy and then the parents. So we really try to take like a whole comprehensive look at the issue, um, because I think people these days are doing that, you know, um, and the the main the the biggest part I think about surrogacy is the severing of these rights of children when they do it right. In the video that you're referencing, the Dear Katie video, you talk about severing it in three ways, right? Because the child, generally speaking, the child involved loses its, um, you know, if you have a, a couple, if it's a, a gay male couple. Um, you usually have them severing the rights of the child, one, in that they remove them from the genetic mother, right? The the, the, the genetic mother, usually they take the egg um, from a, one person, and then they have a surrogate doing the, carrying the, you know, the, the fetus or the the embryo. And then at the end, you know, the third thing is the social removal, right? Because they're going to raise the child without a mom. So, you know, you have them severing the rights of the child in those three areas. And I think people don't, people don't think about that, right? Mm-hmm. So, I think there's um, so, well, yeah, I mean, there's so many things that we don't think about because we, uh, we just imagine as the world thinks um, right. that when, when I'm ready to um, have a child, I will have the right to have a child by one means or another. And that that is not a biblical way to think about things. But it's also really difficult in the in the midst of um, a couple who very much wants to have a child um, to have the hard, honest biblical conversation that says, look, God has a design for this. God has. God has a, a plan. And just because we want a baby, we don't actually have a, we don't have a right to another person. You don't have, when you're born, you don't actually have 
the right to sex. You don't have the right to marriage. You don't have the right, right. to like, but we don't, we don't have, you don't have the right to children. You don't have the right to retirement. Like there's all kinds of things you do not have the right to. Um, right. And yet we, we imagine because of the world in which we live and the way the world operates that we have rights we do not have. Um, yeah. And so uh, I think that one of the things that the video helped me do was really understand that that conversation, how to have it. In this case, the if you're listening, the, the, the conversation emerges, you know, a gay friend wants to have a baby through surrogacy. And so there's lots of layers to the conversation, sex and gender conversations, deviations from the norm of God's design, gender roles, and, and all kinds of other things, in addition to this deep conversation about specifically surrogacy itself. I am more than happy to send you the link to the video on Vimeo, um, but the larger uh, ministry is where we want you to connect as well, and that is Canavox, C-A-N-A-V-O-X dot com. Um, you're listening to Mornings with Carmen. We're going to continue our conversation with April Redliner here in just a moment. She's the executive director of Canavox. Um, we're going to do another Ask Katie uh, video that um, caught my attention um, as well, and so uh, this conversation is uh, is going to continue here on Mornings with Carmen. Back when I was in college, I invited a friend to church. Now, she had literally never been in a church before, so I tried to think of all the things that it would help to explain. We got there early, and I showed her around. We got a bulletin. I told her what to expect, but when the offering basket actually came by, she held on to it, looked down, and asked out loud, what is this? Now, I want you to imagine trying to explain that during worship while the soloist is singing. Now, what makes this story really funny is that she held the basket. I mean, she was asking an honest question, and I was honestly trying to answer, but she's holding the basket, and the ushers are getting antsy. And because I had passed the basket to her, I couldn't easily, like, take it back. So there we sat. I'm attempting to explain the collection of tithes and offerings. My friend is holding the basket. The person on the other side of her is like wide-eyed, boring a hole into me. It's funny now, but I literally like feel the sweat that was rolling down my back in that moment. Explaining why we support a ministry can be challenging. This is listener-supported radio and listener-supported digital media. You're listening to it via podcast, so that's made possible by the financial support of listeners just like you. During our spring fundraiser, we passed the plate. In short, we need your help. If you've never given before, maybe you could consider a dollar a day. It's not actually about the size of the gift. It's about everyone doing their part to make the whole thing possible. So help us continue to share the faith by sharing in faith now. You can give right now by clicking the link in the show notes, by going to MyFaithRadio.com, or texting the word GIVE to 877-933-2484. And thanks in advance. Continuing our conversation about the way God has uh, created us in his image, the way he designed us to live um, in relationship to him, first and foremost, the gift that he gives us of marriage, those who are called into marriage, what that looks like from a biblical worldview, the gift of children um, given in that context. Um, And the challenge that we face when we want something um, that it doesn't seem like God is delivering. Uh, And so we've had portions of this conversation on other days. I'm thinking about a conversation that we had last week um, uh, with um, Anna Broadway about um, Solo Planet, just recognizing that as a woman who is single and Christian, um, the the women who are single and Christian far outnumber the men who are single and Christian, which means that there are going to be a lot of women in this generation who do not get married because they would be une- unequally lo- un- unequally yoked if they did get married. And we don't want that for anybody. And so um, what does it look like to deal as a Christian with these real topics, with these real challenges? So Canavox is around to help us do that um, they have reading groups. I want you to check out what they're doing. Canavox, C-A-N-A-V-O-X dot com. April Redliner is here with us today. She's the executive director. April, you know, dive in again um, to the subject matter. You you obviously get uh, questions all the time. You hear questions from your groups. What's a question yeah. that's emerging that you say? I just kind of I kind of want to talk about this um, in relationship to to all of these things. I'll tell you what we I. 
this is one of the things that we find in, in, in our reading groups, at least the ones that we have here locally. And I think also nationwide, um, you know, as people are reporting back, what happens is the conversations and all of these issues, right, and, and marriage and family, um, you know, we may start off on one topic. We could start off on surrogacy, but then we can end up on getting in what what nowadays everything's leading to is the gender ideology and the gender transgender ideology. It really is something that is concerning for parents all over the place, um, students, right? Like even in our college groups, it really does come back to that because I think that's the thing that is really in everyone's face these days. Um, and as you know, as you see, right? Like really, you can't go a day without having some issue popping up uh, with like a, either a transgender um, influencer or you know one of these things. Some, it always comes up, or with like women, you know, men in women's bathrooms. Or, you know, right now with the NCAA uh, basketball stuff, you know, you have talking about um, allowing, you know, trans, um, you know, trans athletes to play, you know, men to play in women's sports and how, how this all works. So I think because it's so pressing in the media right now um, and really everywhere, that is one topic that just always comes up, regardless of the topic we start on. For some reason, it always makes it way, its way there. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? You, yeah, no, it does. And yeah. so w w I think that equipping us to move from whatever the presenting hot topic is in the culture yeah. to deliberately be able to move into a conversation about God's good design, God's character yeah. and his ways, God's will. Um, because if all we're ever doing is just swirling in the, uh, in the yeah. headline news and which is much of which is very emotionally driven um, and designed yes, to keep us, keep us angry right so yeah um so, so just talk about that a little bit like how 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 do you move in a conversation from the hot topic to you know a solid ground conversation about reality well i think i mean that's why one of the reasons i love that vatican document so much right because i do think it really it, it is really very clear about um god's design you know um and uh, the one, there's this one, and, and also God's design. And then like what um, this idea of, I think in the culture, there's this idea of like freedom. We have to have freedom to do what we want. We have this idea of um, expressive individualism. So like we always have to do things that make us happy. And these are the things um, that we need to do. And we have to have this freedom. Um, but what happens is then you have freedom divorced from truth, right? Um, and, and that's a problem. And what I liked about this document um, that you referenced earlier was, it really boils down to what the truth is. And I think that's what we do in our conversations, right? We get people to focus on like, what is the reality? What is the truth? Um, get away from this idea of self-invention, right? That's so prevalent in the culture. Mm. Um, and I thought like the, the paragraph in the document from the Vatican 57, it said regarding gender theory, the church recalls that human life in all its dimensions, both physical and spiritual is a gift from God. Uh, this gift is to be accepted with gratitude and placed at the service of the good. Desiring a personal self-determination as gender theory prescribes, apart from this fundamental truth that human life is a gift, amounts to a concession to the age-old temptation to make oneself God, entering in competition with the true God of love revealed to us in the gospel. And I just thought that was such a like a powerful um, sentence, you know, or paragraph. Um, and I think, again, like what we try to do at Canavox is um, bring people back to that idea of um, what is good and what is good for the person and human flourishing, right? And and that does mean like getting away from this idea of self-invention and um, we have to be like steep, steeped in reality. That's so good. Um, I super duper appreciate that the document paragraphs are numbered. Yeah, me too. <laughs> so that, so that you can say, Hey, in paragraph 57, da, 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 and then when I open the document, I'm like, Oh, paragraph 57, it's right there. If you're listening right now and you're like, well, I would like to have a copy of, um, of the document that is being discussed, this declaration of infinite dignity issued by the Vatican, it really is um, a, a courageous, honest, 
um, yeah. faithful expression. Um, and so if you're saying to yourself, well, I'm not, I'm not Catholic, that, it, this is a document that is worth your time and attention as a Christian. Um, it yeah. is going to equip you with language. It is well-researched. It is well-spoken. Um, it's well said. Maybe I should say it better that way. Um, and you can do things like this. You can say to, you know, uh, somebody, uh, hey, this is an interesting paragraph in a document. Um, could we talk about it? Um, yeah. Do you think that life is a gift from God and it's a gift to be accepted with gratitude or it's something else? Do you think that life is a gift that's supposed to be placed at the service of of the common good? Or do you think that, you know, this is really a life of self-determination um, where, you know, you get to uh, uh, that you get to be God? Like, right. And th there and then you could just say, let's talk about paragraph 57 of the document. Like, so we want to equip you with um, with these resources. So we're happy to send them directly to you. Just text us 877-933-2484. Also going to send you the link to Canavox and to the video that we talked about a little bit earlier um, on sex, gender and identity, which is a Canavox course. And in particular, I'm just going to send you the link to the video on um, answering the question, you know, about a gay friend who wants to have a baby through surrogacy, because that is a contemporary conversation, and it will give you a, a, um, a look into the way these conversations can be had um, in a really healthy manner. April, um, as always, thank you so much. Thank you, Carmen. Have a great day. Yeah, it's um, it's wonderful to talk with you. So, um, yeah, what uh, what's the question that you're looking for help answering out there in the culture today? Let me know what that is. Um, happy happy to uh, communicate with you further on that. The text line's always open, 877-933-2484. Um, my next question for you is this. What is your even win? <clears throat> what is your personal even win? So in 2 Timothy 2.13, the Bible says this, even when we are too weak to have any faith left, God remains faithful to us and God will help us. Because he cannot disown um, that which is a part of himself. And he's always going to carry out his promises to us. So what is your even when? Even when God is... Even when your life circumstances are not good, is God good? Can God be trusted even when? Can God redeem even this? What is your even when? We're going to talk with Sarah Cormany next. She's the author of Even When, Experiencing God's Presence During Difficult Days. You're listening to Mornings with Carmen. What is your even when? Thank you to the sweet friend on the text line that is sharing a testimony about, you know, even when my eight-year-old son had brain cancer and God chose to take him home and heal him fully there, um, even, even when. Um, she says God showed up so visibly and held us and carries us through. What is your even when? Sarah Cormany joins us now. She is the author of Even When, Experiencing God's Presence During Difficult Days. Yes, we do have copies to give away. Um, you can text the word book to 877-933-2484. Sarah, welcome to Mornings with Carmen. It is a delight to be here. Absolutely. What, um, thank you, first of all, because, yeah, <laughs> it delights my heart to have you here. Um, what is an Even When experience? I think an even one experience is pretty much every single day of our lives. We will face something that challenges us, that really causes us to depend on God and really bring that cognitive dissonance between a good God and a world that's full of hard things. And it kind of stinks. Let's just be honest that it kind of stinks that we have to experience those hard things. But I have found that it is through that lens that we see 
the true heart of a good father. Um, you, I love the way that you so freely um, share your own stories uh, in, in this book. Um, and I want to, I want to just allow you to do some of that here because I think that's going to help folks understand not only what's in the book, but your heart. Um, again, the book is Even When Experiencing God's Presence During Difficult Days. Our conversation partner is Sarah Cormany. Um, what, what do you know about this, Sarah? What, what do you know about Even When? My story is one that I think we could probably all identify with the unexpected places that life takes us. And I began my journey really early on, one of those like strong go-getter kind of girls that just give me a to-do list. And man, whew, I was through that sucker as about as fast as a girl could go. <laughs> and in my mind, even though I trusted God, I gave it lip service. I, I think people, if they looked at my life and my journey would have said, she knows a good God. It wasn't until I was 25 and I began my journey with chronic illness that I really began to understand the heart of God, to understand that he is present in our pain. And for probably about 10 years, I lived in the palm of his hand where I didn't know if I would wake up and it would be a good day or it would be a bad day. And for many, many years, it was just this, we know something's wrong. We've given you several diagnoses, but we really don't know how to treat it. And that's really unsettling when we don't have an answer we we flounder a little bit at least i know that i did in my journey and in my story but in 2011 even though i i thought i understood dependency on god i was about four months postpartum and had a stroke hmm. i had had a weird body for so long i didn't even recognize it i just thought oh my body's being weird and i feel wonky on my left side and i'm talking a little funny and it took me 6 weeks to even go into the doctor where they gave me the clinical diagnosis of stroke several weeks later and man that changes things for you even though i had walked through chronic illness and a life impacting experience, I was now thrown into a life threatening experience. And I had these three sweet babies and I didn't know what to do or how to do it because there certainly isn't a how-to book that says, here's how you parent three small children when you have to booty bump down the stairs to get them from point A to point B. And yet, even when, even when it stunk, even when my heart was broken, even when it was hilarious, because life with small children is already hilarious. You throw in a cane and a wonky left side and it gets pretty funny pretty quick. But that is the heart of my even when. The daily having to come to terms with, I have a body that doesn't work like anyone else's. And certainly there have been other things across the landscape of my life, like loss and illness of other family members or kiddos who are going through challenges. I have learned the longer I live, the more hard there's going to be. But that also gives us the opportunity to see the landscape across a life of the goodness and the grace of God. Would you like to have a devotional companion for the even when journey? Um, this is a this is a devotional experience, even when experiencing God's presence during difficult days. Sarah Cormany is the author. We do have uh, copies of the book to give away today. You can text the word book to 877-933. Two four eight four. What is your even when moment? You probably have lots of them, 
like, um, you know, maybe you have a, a storms of life, even when, or a tragedy that you've experienced that's an even when, um, something that has influenced the course of your life, um, the pace of your life, the people with whom you are spending your life. Where has God shown up in the midst of, um, of hardship? Um, those are all the kinds of um, questions and journeys that you'll experience um, with Sarah in this even when um, devotional journey. Um, Sarah, you ask lots of thought-provoking questions, um, and I, I love that. I love the I love the personal stories, but I also really appreciate the thought-provoking questions that you include. You're encouraging us to embrace the truth that God is enough even when. Can you, can you just ask a couple of those thought-provoking questions so people can get a sense of it? I will do my best. I tell you what, my brain this early in the morning <laughs> is not the greatest, but I will try to have some questions. I, I think all I can do is reflect back on my own life yeah, and the questions, that, the questions that I think I have to ask myself daily. And I would say probably one of the biggest ones is, do you remember? Do you see and really appreciate what God has done in your life in the past so that you can get through your present? A lot of the stories that are in the book, and I'll tell one here in just a minute, but a lot of the stories that are in the book are really a call for me to remember now what I didn't think would happen then, which is mm. that when we, when we look over the cliff, when we face loss, illness, financial devastation, all the things that I already mentioned, when we look over that cliff, we kind of we edge towards it and we kind of peek over and say, okay, I think he's there, but it is not until you literally fall headlong into the pit, into the valley that you realize that the world will fade away. People will fade away. Community may even fade away, but God won't. And I love having, and, and even though it was a challenge, I loved having small children, when I was really grappling with the intensity of those first years of disability, because I could see things through the eyes of my kids that I wouldn't have any other way. And there was one day I was, I was eking down my, my stairs and I could hear my littles just talking up a storm. And you never want to interrupt those moments as a mom. You just want to, want to kind of, hope that you're a fly on the wall. And I heard one of them say, I tell them she's Dory. And I'm sure most of your listeners are familiar with the movie Finding Nemo. I tell them she's Dory, the little fish who had short-term memory problems. And listening to them talk about how, I mean, gosh, that's, that's hard as a mom. To know that your babies have to explain to their friends why mom is different, why her body works different, why her mind works different, why she's kind of a hot mess was this kind of sucker punch in the best way possible because I have short-term memory loss when it comes to God's faithfulness so many times where I literally one minute. And I think we do this as a Christian culture sometimes. We focus so much on, hey, God is good in the good times, but everything kind of hits the fan when it all falls away. And so I have endeavored and usually fail, but have to go back to, do you remember? Do you remember my faithfulness? Do you remember all I've brought you through? And every story in the devotional is a call to remember his goodness in my own life. That's so good. That's so good. We're talking with Sarah Cormany. The book is Even When. We do have copies to give away today. You can text the word book to 877-933-2488. 
84. Sarah's going to tell us some more even when stories up next. Um, do you do you remember? Do you remember the goodness of God and the faithfulness of God? Um, do you trust him? Do you remember when you prayed for what you have now? Um, we're going to continue the conversation in just a moment. You're listening to Mornings with Carmen. As we consider the life of Jesus and the life of the first generation of Christians, reading here the book of Acts and all the letters to the Christians in the New Testament, we see people who like wake up. They come to see and understand and then receive Jesus as their Savior and Lord. And it changes everything. We see Christians then telling other people about the good news and inviting them to respond in repentance, be baptized, and follow Jesus. The movement of Christianity grows person by person and then exponentially as people walking in darkness receive the light of Christ and want others to know what they know and have what they have. Well, you and I are living in dark days. People need light. And Jesus is the light of the world today in the same way that he was the light of the world at the beginning of creation and at the first Christmas and throughout his life on earth and in his radiance now at the right hand of the Father. Jesus is the light of the world. So if you're walking in darkness of any kind today, I invite you to consider Jesus. If you'd like to know more about what it means to begin a relationship with Christ or to chat with someone about it, just text the word FAITH to 41224. What is your even when story? Carlene is on the text line, uh, 877-933-2484. Even when I was diagnosed with uh, pancreatitis cancer and my heart melted, God showed up to remind me that I'm still in his hand and showed me how he would make my story one, not about my illness, but about his faithfulness. Three years living now with cancer in God's faithfulness, even when. Um, what is your even when story? I would, uh, I would love, I would love to know. You can text me eight seven seven nine three three two four eight four. I'm Carmen LeBurge. You're listening to Mornings with Carmen here on the Faith Radio Network. It's possible you're hearing this program for the very first time. Um, welcome to those of you listening on our new Faith Radio affiliate in Billings, Montana. This is what we do every day. We get together with fellow Christians. We talk about the things that are going on in our life. We bring the mind of Christ to bear. We get into the Word of God. We pray for each other. So welcome to the Faith Radio family. Talking today with Sarah Cormany. She's a she's a mom. She's a Christian. Um, she's an author. The book we're talking about today, Even When, Experiencing God's Presence During Difficult Days. Sarah, maybe, um, maybe just share another Even When story with us. Oh gosh, there's so, you know, it's funny how things in life just continue to draw you back to the lessons that you think you have learned so well. And then you're like, oh, nope, didn't learn that as well as I thought I did. Going back to that idea of remembering one, one story though, that I think is definitely on my heart, at least in this season of my life, is how do we use our even ones to help other people? And we rush so, so, so much through life. We go so fast and God begs us to be still. And I, I, there is a story and I know we only have a few minutes, but I will tell it briefly. I was walking out of the grocery store one day and you know how when you have that to-do list and you're trying to get all the things done, it's really easy to miss people. And it's really easy to ignore even when the Holy Spirit is prompting you. And I got into my van and I sat there and I was looking at my list. I knew that babies had to get picked up, all the things. And I could see movement on the side of just out of my peripheral vision. And I realized it was somebody in the other car next to me waving. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want to look because I had that Mm -hmm. to-do list. But finally, I turned my head. 
and there was this sweet older lady. And so I rolled down my window, even begrudgingly, I'll admit, I'll be honest with you. And it was this sweet lady who was probably the age of my grandmother that at that time we were walking her home as a result of dementia and complications with a stroke. And so all of a sudden, God grabbed my heart. And I was just like, what can I do? How can I help? She's like, I don't have any gas. Mm-hmm. And I don't, I, I don't know how to get home. And my, my son, I keep trying to call him, but I can't, I can't get to him. Mm-hmm. And she said, this is what got me. You weren't the first person that I tried to ask to help me. Our pain, our even ones, the only reason that I was able to see past my own self-serving, selfish ambition to get that to-do list done was because I recognized something in her eyes that I had seen every day in the eyes of my grandmother. We have to be willing to look up in our even ones because that's how we move from here until home, joining together, remembering God's faithfulness in our lives and one another's lives. Psalm 56, eight is one of my favorites. You keep track of all my sorrows. You have collected all my tears in your bottle. You have recorded each one in your book. I may have short-term memory problems, and forget the goodness of God over and over again. But he does not forget my pain. And he will use it even when it hurts. Even when you're broken. Even when you don't think you can make it to the next day. Sarah, thank you. Um, Thank you for what I'm going to call the even when lens. Thank you for giving us a lens to um, see our circumstances through. Thank you for giving us a lens to see one another through. Thank you for giving us a lens to see our um, current circumstances through the even when lens. Um, If you'd like a, a copy of Even When, Experiencing God's Presence During Difficult Days. We do have some to give away. You can enter the drawing by texting the word book to 877-933-2484. Sarah Cormany um, would be happy to connect with you. Her website is sarahcormany.com. Sarah, what a blessing. Thank you so much for being with us today on Mornings with Carmen. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Absolutely. My friend, what is your even when story? I'd love for you to um, to share it. Uh, the text line is always open, 877-933-2484. Erica says, my even when, um, I was diagnosed with breast cancer one week after finding out that I was pregnant with my third baby. God's breath of peace washed over me over and over again. He was faithful. He protected both of us through 16 rounds of chemotherapy. Olivia is now a year and a half old, and I am cancer-free. Hallelujah. Um, Erica, thank you so much um, for that testimony. Kevin says, um, uh, yeah, even when. um, I don't think I'm going to read Kevin's um, even when on the air, but sometimes um, the the even wins are more um, more than we can fully express. Shirley says, even when close friends are going through health journeys, I pray and I can offer help, um, continuing to seek the guidance of the Holy Spirit to show me just how to support them spiritually as well. The most important part of the even when, um, even when, um, even when all that has happened to me, um, could fill a book. I've counted it all joy in the goodness of the Lord. Um, and that is a big amen, even when, hey, thank you so much for sharing this time with me today. Um, If you're new to Faith Radio, we'd love to send you uh, a welcome pack. Just text the word welcome to 877-933-2484. If you're in the the Twin Cities and you want to join me, um, meet up on Saturday morning, April the 20th. Text the word meet 
to the same number. If you're in Duluth and you want to meet up with me on the afternoon of April the 21st, text Duluth. Thanks for listening to Mornings with Carmen LaBerge. Podcasts like this are available because of your support. If it's important to you to hear things that encourage your faith, click the link in the show notes to give now. And thanks.